So three, let's have fun fixing something that somebody else tried to fix and failed or gave up and maybe caused a lot of disasters in the process. This is my second multimeter, the one in the bad condition. The better one is already fixed and working. And it was mostly original. This one has a lot of repairs and botches in it. For example, this one still has the original hybrid circuit, regulating the plus and minus 12 volt rails for the op-amps. And this one it apparently failed and the previous owner replaced it by a separate 7, 8, 12 and 7, 9, 12 regulators from some prototyping board. Not sure these terminals are original. The other one has just holes here. And of course in the original one there is a three wire cable plugged in here. And this one actually doesn't have the cable. The previous owner probably lost the cable and botched in a different cable instead of it. Which is permanently soldered and is just a two pin plug and so it's not grounded. Despite it's actually meant to be grounded. And of course originally both of them had this handle. But this one is missing, or maybe it was removed because it was inconvenient and the remaining holes were covered using some rubber feet and not just the rubber feet but there is a piece of blank circuit board stuck to it for some reason. And of course originally the box is white or light grey, slightly yellowed of course now, but this pile of botches has the cover spray painted blue for some reason and the logo is removed from the top and is stuck to the front panel here. Also I guess the front panel was white and it's painted black. Of course the paint is coming over here. This is not originally black. Well this is like modifying your car. And then the only person that likes it is you. I was thinking about removing the paint from it but it would require a lot of solvent and maybe then the cost of the solvent exceeds the value of this. So before doing the cosmetic things, let's try to fix it. I have these old stock plugs and sockets, so I can replace this botch cable, but first let's see if it's even worth it. Let's try to test it. At least it lights up. And of course the markings of the receptacles are gone with the paint. This one is for the resistances and voltages, this one for the currents, and this one is the common ground. Let's try resistances first. A 12 kilo ohm resistor connected to it, and it shows a zero. A 665 ohm resistor shows a zero. A 330 kilo ohm resistor shows again almost a zero. Almost every resistance shows a zero, just like if it's shorted. But if it's not shorted, it's floating. Now let's try the voltages. Connecting 15 volts from a bench power supply and it seems to work. Now let's reduce the voltage. 3 volts. Nice. And when I go below 3 volts, it starts clicking. The wrench switching relays are clicking and the auto ranging function is basically just cycling in a loop. This basically logs the auto ranging. Now it's working. And now again cycling. The auto ranging is bad for voltages. And now let's try the current. About 0.3 milliamps works. The next range, about 3 milliamps, it works. 30 milliamps in the right ballpark. Now let's try 300 milliamps. And it's actually showing about 3000 because there seems to be a missing decimal point here. And also this Nixie got very dim now. So the current measurement is sort of working, except being a bit off. The decimal point not working in this position and this Nixie getting very dim, but just in this configuration. You can see now this zero is very dim. Here it's not as dim. Weird, it's changing brightness based on the range. It seems that this Nixie always gets dimmer just when the decimal point is meant to light up here. So is the decimal point somehow internally shorted and it pulls the voltage down for this one? And of course the previous owner lost the original screws, the slotted ones, and put some horrible hex screws into it randomly, each of them different. Now we have to use this horrible screwdriver, imagine that. Using this for something vintage. And of course this main inlet panel is glued in. It's not supposed to be glued in. How am I supposed to remove the board then? In this one it's just slided into a slot. 
<laughs> this is really such a pile of botches. With this in place I can't slide the board out. You have to slide these buttons out and basically lift it and take it out this way. Now I managed to break the glue loose without breaking anything. Now this should come out. And that's it. Let's see the carnage on the other side of the board. Well, there is some botch short connection. Of course some added ceramic capacitors parallel to the replaced capacitors. And of course there are four replaced electrolytic capacitors. These two and these two. Instead of this, this, this and this. And I was thinking this red wire is a botch from the previous owner, but no. Looking at the board from the other multimeter, it has the same wire, so it's from the manufacturer. And there are scratches on this board. Was the previous owner trying to remove some shard here? Or did he replace this next year? But it doesn't make any sense because the decimal point that's not working is part of this Nixie, and because these are left decimal point Nixies, not right decimal point. Was he replacing the wrong Nixie? I don't think so. Well, looking at the other multimeter board, there are also some scratches or some attempts to remove some shorts. Is this from a manufacturer? Maybe they had problems with the board production and the boards were actually produced with some tiny shorts on them. But anyway, let's think about how it's possible that when this Nixie is trying to light up the decimal point, this one gets dim. These two don't really have any common components. They have their own decoders, their own resistors, their own transistors to light up the decimal points. The only explanation how this could happen is that the decimal point of this one is shorted to the anode of this one on the board, which makes sense because I was tracing the tracks on the board and the trace going to the anode of this one runs next to the trace going to the decimal point of this one. And they probably have some short between them, that's the only explanation what could cause such a weird problem. Nothing else than these two traces shorted could cause the problem, but they're actually not shorted. It's showing about 30 mega ohms between them. Well, now I powered it and the decimal point is working here, and the problem basically sorted itself. How it's possible that it's now working without fixing anything? Okay, so now the only explanation of this is that there was some tiny fragment of a metal or a piece of a solder or a thin whisker growing and shorting these two traces and as I was moving and touching the board it came off. So now the current measurement is fully working, it works in all ranges, but I still have to fix the voltages and the resistances. So I started looking at the range switching circuitry, which probably has some problem in it. I was also comparing the boards and I noticed they're not exactly the same. For example, this resistor here is not in this one, and this resistor here is not in this one, and this resistor behind the capacitors is not in this one. They're slightly different versions. And this one is from 86, this one from 87. I was comparing the boards, if it maybe helps me find the problem in the other ranging circuitry and... Oh crap! Now I noticed, there is something missing. This one contains eight relays, five here, one here, one under the board and one here, but this relay is missing in this one. I guess it's not because of the slightly different version. I guess the relay was actually here and somebody desoldered it from these four terminals. Seems like somebody maybe used it for parts or maybe took a bad relay from it and never found a replacement. And it also seems somebody was marking the transistors here. One, two, three and four dots. I guess somebody marked the transistors when trying to find the problem with the decimal point because these four actually switched the decimal point in the four Nixies. And then there are another two transistors switching the plus and a minus symbol in the polarity indication Nixie and this Nixie, which only shows a 0, 1, 2, 3, has four transistors switching the digits. It has 3300 counts, so the most significant Nixie doesn't need the full 1 out of 10 decoder. And the 74, 141. But let's go back to the range switching. It has eight relays in total in it. I guess four of them are for the currents, and that's why the currents work. And another four are for the voltages and the resistances. And basically a resistance meter is just a voltmeter with a constant current supply connected to the input. So 
So the resistance meter mostly uses the same circuitry as the voltmeter. Well, the current meter also uses most of the circuitry of the voltmeter, but instead of switching resistive dividers, it switches current sensing shunts or low resistance resistors parallel to the input. And the relays are very simple, just four pins, two for the coil and two for the normally open contact. And it seems he marked on the board some dotted lines, and it seems these are the coils of the relays. So it seems he was already trying to fix it. So let's measure the resistances. All the coils are slightly over 200 ohms, except one, which is just 152 ohms. This one good, this one good, this one good, this one good. This one is strangely a lower resistance. Does it have short turns? And he drew an X or a cross across the dotted line. Maybe he was already trying to mark which one is bad. Well, the coil with the lower resistance now has the same resistance as the other ones. And the same in the other direction. 200 something ohms. How oh, that's possible? That's weird. But of course it's not easy to test it in a circuit because the relay coils are connected to some outputs of chips. So we might be measuring something else than just the resistance of the coil. And also it's tricky to try to connect some voltage to the coil when it's in a circuit because I could damage the chips. Of course I could measure the contacts and connect the voltage to see if the contacts switch, but not sure I want to risk damaging the chips. And the coils of these relays are 5 volts, powered from the logic voltage from 7805. But let's try to actually test them using a bench power supply, but I'm setting the limit of the power supply just to 50 milliamps. If I was using a higher current I could damage something because I might be forcing the voltage into something else than just the coil. There's circuitry connected to it. And a 200 ohm coil at 5 volts is meant to draw about 25 milliamps. So I guess 50 milliamp limit is acceptable and it shouldn't damage anything. And yes, the relay is switching. So this relay is not bad. Testing the other relays. All the relays are good. So I guess the only bad one is the one that's not there. And these are read relays, which are a bit different from the traditional relays like this one. They're much faster and unfortunately I don't have any old stock of these relays. I could buy a very similar replacement, but to make it more interesting let's try to actually make my own. I have a lot of these read contacts and I will try to calculate and wind a coil for it. But I will put it into a separate video because this one would be too long and some people might be interested in just this. And now the relay is finished. It looks absolutely horrible, but it works. So let's solder it in. And you can see the construction of it in the other video, which ended up uploaded before this one. So the relay is horribly botched in. And testing time. Let's test the voltage measurement and let's see if the ranges are switching. It has four ranges, now it's in the first. Up to 0 0.33 volts. Now the second up to 3.3 volts. Nice. Now the third up to 33 volts. Well, I have to use a different power supply. This one goes up to 15. Now it should switch into the fourth range. And it does. So that's all four ranges of the voltages working. And now let's try the resistances. 1 kilo ohm resistor should be still in the first range. Of course it's a bit off, but that's actually the resistor. A 10 kilo ohm resistor gets it into the second range. Nice. A 100 kilo ohm resistor into the third range. And of course that's the resistor that much off. And finally a 1 mega ohm resistor. And it's very close. This is the last range. All four ranges of the resistances work. And the 1 kilo ohm resistor also shows 1.01 on this one. And the 100 kilo ohm resistor used for the test is also bloody off. And of course if the multimeter wasn't super accurate it can be recalibrated using these five multi-turn potentiometers. It has marking from the outside and you can recalibrate it without opening it and here it says some resistance calibrations plus minus zero. And there is the 63 milliamp fuse, so let's check it. Because in the other identical multimeter I actually found a 1.25 bloody amp fuse. 
instead of 63 milliamps. So let's see what disaster this one is hiding. Well, what the hell? It's broken. Did somebody actually stick a wire into it? How this was even working with the broken fuse? Let's give it a proper fuse. By this I mean the proper rating, but also a fuse from a trusted supplier, not from eBay. The fuse goes in, and here's the horrible non-grounded botched in a cable, which is soldered here, and at least the person put this cover on the penis, so the live penis are not exposed. And of course, somebody was already poking in these adjustment potentiometers, it seems. I will give it a grounded cable, which is the same as the other multimeter has. At the end of it will go into this plug, which belongs there. And this horrible thing is somehow glued in. Can I even get it out without destroying the connector? I somehow got it out. If it's broken, I can still give it another, of course. And this horrible cable has to go. Okay, the cable is in the connector. And of course, giving it the screws, it's actually meant to have. And the cable can go in. And of course, this interference filter in it still has to be replaced. It contains the paper capacitor, which likes to explode and spit some horrible, sticky, oily, waxy liquid everywhere. But I have to get one more suitable replacement, as I did in the other multimeter. And now both multimeters are running. And this one seems dimmer, but it's actually the plexiglass being darker. And I really like how quickly and this is updating and auto-ranging. Let's try this 178 ohm resistor and... Connecting now for 6.8 kilo ohms. Now... Now, let's compare it to a multimeter. Connecting now, flip, 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 and now it's reading. Connecting now, now it's reading. With these multimeters you don't even blink and it's there. Now, now, now. So that's it and if you like my videos please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who already support me because you keep this channel running.